Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. began to be doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You guys have waited for it for a whole year. The last month, we've taken votes. We've given away an ounce of silver. Mr. Uh, Adam Chalene, your, your silver is being sent, or probably with these dunce caps. We've given away an ounce of silver, and now it is time to see the dunce cap of the year. I'm going to give you that first, and then I'm going to give you all the idiot stories that didn't make the dunce cap of the month, but almost did this month. And then I'm going to give you the dunce cap of the month. But here is the dunce cap of the year. Um, it was chosen. The dunce cap of the year. Award way to go, Florida CPS. There is you see a picture of a treehouse. Hint as to who won. Again, you can look up a correct views treehouse uh, CPS. You'll find it on my site. Sends out the dunce cap of the month award. It is only once a year that our listeners vote for the dunce cap of the year. They choose the dumbest, more idiotic, harebrained, ass-backwards thinking story of the 12 on any year. And you, fools at the CPS, have managed to win, I wrote. Our listeners have spoken, and you need to allow children to be children and not overstep your rule when it comes to the property of those in the area. <laughs> you are vile, self-serving people. And you are dunce of the year. Change your ways. Uh, here's the hat that I made them. There you will find a tree house with a great big no sign on it. Because dunce says, look at that. Not just of the year. Indeed. So that is, that's that's going to be set. Uh, that will be their second dunce cap. Um, and they, they got it for the month and they got it for the year. Now here's a hand. Down here. See a piece of it. That's this month's Dunce Cap winner, and we're not going to go to it yet, <coughs> because I want to get to our other idiots. Starting with this here at Truth Revolt, Paul, I think it's Boas. Oscars so whiny. I have never heard anything as pretentious and self-serving as the Oscars. For one thing, let me tell you where straight out of Compton didn't get a, uh, a nod. Because America, unless they love fucking culture, rejected your stupid film. Music in this country was decent among all races until NWA happened. Then Eazy -E took scum to a whole new level, <clears throat> got AIDS, and then went out of his way to sleep with as many groupies as possible and give them AIDS. So, no, I don't think he's a good man. I think he is a terrible person and a piece of human filth, and I think the world would have been better off if his music was never made. And a lot of other people feel the same way. It's racist to not give them an award. The movie sucked. His music, their music sucked, and I'm glad they didn't get a nod at the Academy Award. You know, the Academy Award for destroying the culture and the music of a whole country, you morons. It was a changing of the guard moment at this year's 88th Academy Awards, a disastrous show that ushered in a new area of Tinseltown leftists complaining and proselytizing before a crowd that was either in total agreement or just too cowardly to say anything in protest. Chris Rock began his opening monologue bashing his white overlords for having the racist audacity to welcome him as host. So he gets the best job in all of comedic history and then accuses the people that gave it to them of being racist. Way to go. You're a genius, you freak. I, I, Chris Rock is somebody I can't even stand to look at anymore. He's just a piece of race-baiting human felt. It's even worse, it says, that uh, Michael Moore's shame on you Bush speech. Um, wine, wine, wine. Uh, not content to let Rock take the award for whiner of the evening, actor Kevin Hart, also black, later took the stage, launching into a minute-long rant about how actors of color, none of whom were nominated for the second year in a row, shouldn't let white Academy oppression get them down. Of course, he's being allowed to speak on national TV, and he's just upset that by dumb coincidence, a minority didn't happen to do the best acting job. It would stand to reason, not because of any races, but if somebody by their very numbers are a minority, then there are going to be more of the majority that do a good job 
than uh, just pure numbers. It's, it's like, it's like th there's nothing racist here. Either your movie was good enough or it wasn't. There have been times, like, you ever see the Cotton Club? It's full of black people. And it might be one of the best gangster movies ever written. Sometimes African Americans are at the top. And sometimes another, and maybe it's a female, maybe it's a white person. It is not racist. But wine, 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 everything comes down to racist. <clears throat> black people with the uh, best comedic speaking job ever complaining that <clears throat> people don't like you. Academy President Cheryl Boone Isaacs gave another speech about her ongoing crusade to rid the Academy of old white men. So, of course, you know, you can just, uh, it doesn't matter who the best movie goes to. You can just, it doesn't matter if they earned it, just give it to them based on their gender, color, race, religion, whatever. Uh, Lady Gaga, of course, uh, till it happens to you, you won't know how it feels, of course, uh, Nothing wrong with Fifty Shades of Grey being mentioned at the same time. Uh, after a Bogota, Bogota of the Godfather fame died and hardly got a mention at all. Meanwhile, they're whining Spike Lee didn't show up. You know what? I think the Oscars were better without Spike Lee. I hope he doesn't show up next year. I think all of movie making would be better if it didn't include Spike Lee. <laughs> All right, uh, campus reform, Duke grad student equates free speech to white supremacy, Peter Frick. I told you the dunce cap of the month this month was just going to be over the top. And all the ones uh, leading up to it were going to be as insane as they've been in recent months. And uh, you're not going to be let down. A Duke University graduate student claims in a recent op-ed that defending free speech on college campuses is tantamount to white supremacy. So, of course, now your God-given right is uh, what you were given by God is now a, ma a matter of white supremacy. Um, so I guess if uh, if black people don't have the right to speak freely, could, of course, they have the First Amendment, too, as they should. If black people are not allowed to speak freely, then that is also white supremacy, right? Ridiculous. I am thinking about how an urgent and overdue conversation about racism on our campus and across our country has been derailed by the divisionary and duplicitous obsession with the First Amendment. Grad student idiot Bennett Carpenter, who's on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show, wrote in an op-ed for the Duke Chronicle last week, which of course looks like it might be good for lining your birdcage. <clears throat> the idiot goes on, I'm thinking about how quickly the conversation has shifted from white supremacy to white fragility, and how this shift is itself an oppression of white supremacy, of course. I have yet to see a single example of a student activist violating the First Amendment. Tweet this. Carpenter argues that those who have expressed concerns about the shifting of free speech on college campuses in the wake of last semester's racial protests are merely hiding behind the First Amendment to deflect conversations about race and racism in order to protect themselves from race-based stresses. In other words, everybody can speak freely unless, of course, you happen to be white. Then, of course, you have no God-given rights at all. The other thing is I think it's hilarious that the black community got so uptight about the uh, poop swastika that happened uh, in previous semester. Because swastikas, while no friend of the black man, is more an enemy of the Jew. Uh, so, I mean, their entire basis for the argument made very little sense at all. But anyway, we're moving on to other idiots. Paul Joseph Watson, uh, Prison Planet. Danish government opens the door for potential migrant sex offenders to work with children. Now, this is where, if I had the money, I would send dunce caps overseas. Because of all the idiots that you are going to hear, this one here is going to rank really high. Uh, the Danish government uh, should be very fortunate that I can't afford to send them there. In a disturbing development, the Danish government is set to drop a requirement that newly arrived migrants prove that they are not sex offenders in order to allow refugees to work with children in nurseries and daycare centers. In other words, I'm not saying they should. The Danish should the Danish people have to get vigorous checks to make sure that they are not sex offenders in order to get a job working with children, which makes sense. But that won't be the case for refugees. We'll just trust them. Why not? 
under current rules, it is legal requirement that kindergartens, daycare centers, and nurseries ensure that an employee has not previously been convicted of sexual offenses against children. But when the country's municipalities want to send newly arrived refugees to work at daycare centers, it is often impossible to get a hold of the necessary information in their home countries. And therefore, the government is now willing to change the law. So they are not going to make sure that the people watching their children are not sex offenders. They are not going to make them stay in the country at least a given amount of time before being able to work with their children. No, we will just allow a large group of men coming from an area where rape is considered a rite of passage, and we will allow them to watch our children. And no, I am not being derogatory against the Muslim religion but I am being derogatory against some practitioners of it, such as, uh, look up the quote, you would no more ask a child for sex than you would ask a shoe for permission to wear it. There are a lot of people from that area that love to molest children. So let's not wait any time at all. Let's just let them watch our children and hope for the best. Dances! Uh, Daily Caller, this is brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Go to StickerJunkie.com, type in the correct views at checkout, and you're going to get a great deal on them. Comedy Festival will charge white men more to fight the wage gap. Now, first of all, there is no wage gap. Uh, You can prove this in a number of ways. First and foremost, when's the last time you ever picked up a newspaper and it said offering $15 an hour for men and $12 an hour for women? That never happened. So you can have a common sense will point the lie out, um, among other ways. But what if you said that gay people had to pay more? Or blacks or Asians or whoever had to pay more to go. Well, everybody would be up in arms, and yet this happens, and it's perfectly okay, right? An upcoming comedy festival in New York City is charging different rates for attendees in an apparent effort to check the privilege of straight white men. So in other words, I hope no straight white men come and they have an absolute flop. The Cinderblock Comedy Festival, which uh, is going to be held from September 15th to the 18th, so make sure that you're somewhere else because it's going to be a bunch of leftist dribble. Uh, It's in the hipster stronghold of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where hopefully uh, white people will not go to see their stupidity. With the festivities just seven months away, organizers are already urging potential performers to apply to perform, but the festival has one very notable policy. Currently, only women, non-whites, and those who identify as LGBT are allowed to apply for early bird price of $19.95. Everybody else will have to pay $25, and it's intended to closely match the off-quote and an off-criticized statistic that women are in just 70 70- seven percent of what men are and of course that's absolutely not true it's been disproven in every way it doesn't happen it's not happened in ages in our my lifetime and i'm 43 and it's not happening now it's an absolute lie um it's very very often that this is quoted but just because it's said all the time doesn't mean that it's true it has no fact to it at all and it's, it's very easily disproven by anybody that knows how to use google <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of other race baiting idiots, huh? Al Sharpton says a Democratic and, and de- de- excuse me, Democratic rep agree that Clarence Thomas isn't really black. Now, before I go on with this, let me go ahead and uh, here. I can type today forward in my way. Now let's look here at Fat Cam. For those of you with Fat Cam here, you, you will enjoy this greatly, I can assure you. That to me, and I, again, I, correct me if I'm wrong, that man right there, let me hit screen share. I want, I want your opinion. That man right there is in fact, he's a black man. Now, let's see here. There he is on fact cam. I'm sorry. Hello, Clarence Thomas, and God bless you. May you live a long, happy, healthy life. That's a black man. Now, you don't have to be a genius to figure that out, which is great because, let's face it, 
Al Sharpton isn't. That's why he's on the Dunk's Cap of the Month award show. But in a bizarre exchange on Al Sharpton's Sunday MSNBC show, which I'm sure at least four people watch, both he and Black Democratic idiot representative Karen Bass, who looks like a bass, floated the idea that President Obama needs to nominate an African-American to the Supreme Court because Clarence Thomas isn't no black. And of course, what he's saying is he doesn't believe in white privilege because there isn't any. He isn't in favor of blaming whitey for things that whitey never did. Most people who are white are listening to this have no ties to slavery at all. But because he doesn't side with their particular lie, he isn't black. And I've heard this argument before. I had this idiot where I work try to tell me that because I know, and I don't think, I know, that Beyonce is crap. Weekend, Lil Wayne, T-Pain, T.I., all of it is crap that I'm somehow racist. And I mentioned that I love The Prodigy, that I think Carl Cox is a DJ genius, who I was very delighted to meet, and the Chad Smith of Suffocation, who was very much a black drummer, are, is probably the, one, maybe the best drummer alive today. To which I was told they're not really black. And what they mean is, if you don't pander to the black vote and believe in the lie that is white privilege, then you are not allowed to be black, no matter what your skin color is, proving that it's all about an agenda and not about a race. Mark Gebertz writes, a member of German left youth party apologizes to refugees on Facebook after alleged sexual assault by migrants. This here is utter stupidity, and it's another, if I set dunce caps overseas, this idiot would be in for it. Why don't you apologize to the man who raped you? <clears throat> Celine Gorin, member of the Links Jun Sold, a far-left German youth organization, was reportedly sexually assaulted by a refugee on January 27th. After an initial false report that she had been assaulted by foreigners and Germans alike, she revised her story before taking to Facebook to apologize for any racism that might be caused by the revelation that her alleged assailant was a migrant. So since they may have been from another country, <clears throat> they are allowed to rape you and then get an apology. Listen to this. Dear male refugee, I'm a bit older. I'm incredibly sorry. Almost a year ago, I saw the hell which you escaped from, which means that it's okay to rape. I wasn't directly in the center, but I visited the people in the refugee center in southern Kurdistan, where it's okay to rape. I saw old grandmothers who were okay with rape, and who had to take care of too many orphan children, who it was probably okay to rape. I saw the eyes of those kids and didn't lose their light because they wanted to rape. Oh, uh, you get the point. She is writing this weepy, sorry, I it's okay, I know you didn't mean it, to the man who sexually assaulted her. And then you want to know why we laugh at the far left? <laughs> you apologize to, he must have gone through a lot. He was probably a rapist in his country. They were about to kill him, so he went to another country and raped you. And because you're so sorry... He's probably going to go and rape somebody else, you moron. Kit Daniels, Prison Planet, Hillary. Sexist NASA destroyed my astronaut aspirations. A-S-T-R-N-A-T. I guess that means she became an astronaut with two S's. I don't know, friends. That could be my only guess. Listen to this. Um, Hillary Clinton claims sexist NASA stopped her dreams to become an astronaut. I wrote to NASA and said, well, how do you get to be an astronaut? She said on the Steve Harvey show, which is airing on February 24th. They wrote me back saying, thank you very much for your interest. At this time, we are not accepting woman astronauts. Now, never mind the fact that they didn't know how the radiation was going to affect the, re the female reproductive system or what it might do to a woman's breasts. No, NASA was racist, Listen uh, or sexist. Listen to this bonehead trollop that wants to be our leader. Listen. Uh, I'm back with Secretary Clinton that she's definitely known for breaking ground in so many ways. 
in her professional breaking life. Wind. What you might not know is that she's been breaking ground in her personal and professional life since she was a kid. So let's let's go back to when you were just a kid. Listen to this idiot. Oh my goodness. You, you wanted to be an astronaut. I did. I was excited about the space program. I was excited about President Kennedy saying we were going to send a man to the moon and bring him back within a decade. I thought it was really incredible that we were going to do that. So yes, I wrote to NASA. Really? I wrote to NASA, you know, <laughs> and I said, well, how do you get to be an astronaut? They wrote me back saying, thank you very much for your uh, interest. At this time, we are not accepting women astronauts. <laughs> And it, did, you know, it hurt my feelings, but I could have never been an astronaut anyway, but I was happy that Sally Ride and other women got to be astronauts later on. Yeah, once they found out it was safe to do so. This is more classism. BS. Anything to pander. They wouldn't let me be an astronaut. You shouldn't even have been a senator. You shouldn't have even been allowed to clean up the poop at the doghouse when you were there. Idiots. Uh, I, what else needs to be said about that one? Uh, listen to this. Uh, more of the religion of peace. Um, Jude Law's minders attacked by Calais jungle migrants during charity visit, proving you know that, that, that they have their uh, they have their anger set in the right direction. You know those that want to help them again, maybe they should be apologized to. A security team regarding Jude Law, whatever that is, was attacked by migrants as the Hollywood star visited the jungle camp in Calais. I guess it's an act. You've never heard of him. The 43-year-old actor was in France with a film crew and Brit-winning singer Tom Odell, who I also don't know, 25, to witness the horror of the squalid makeshift village, which is due to be demolished. Well, maybe if they didn't break into the country against the will of the people, that would not be the case. Um, again, if, if you're going to move into another country, then at least try to acclimate to the culture that you have to go to as much as you can. Shortly after the cameras stopped rolling, their minders were ambushed by some of the migrants who had had their cell phones stolen. It said it is understood that Jude was already on the production team's bus when the thugs attacked. So, I mean, I'm sorry to say that a lot of these people are acting like animals, and this is why they are not welcomed in so many places. And you're not supposed to say that, but it's absolutely true. Uh, then you've got the Chinese who have no sense of history. Chinese foreign minister in Washington, South China, see ours has it's been ours since ancient times. Now, I do believe it was Minister Wang Yi, the idiot who has said before, the, he keeps using the word contested islands. They're contested. They're contested. They're always contested. They've been contested. Uh, Japan contests them. Well, now he's saying, no, they've always been ours. Which one is it, moron? Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who, sh again, if I could mail him overseas, told Secretary of State John Kerry that the South China Sea belongs to his country and they have every right to defend the territory despite the lack of evidence China have legally controlled the territory it claims in the region. The islands of the South China Sea have been China's territory since ancient times. That is not true. They have changed hands many times. And China has the right to safeguard its territorial sovereignty. Literally, what else is to say? No sense of history whatsoever on their absolute boneheaded comment. Uh, they have taken it uh, and claimed it as theirs for quite some time, but that doesn't mean it's real any more than uh, they believe that, you know, uh, that uh, North Korea is a democracy, despite the name. You get the point. A campus reform community college is, uses unbiased language to protect special interest groups. Another college fail. I have never seen so much a whining as we need our safe space. <laughs> Capital Community College in Hartford, Connecticut encourages students to be sensitive to minorities and special interest groups to preserve their feelings in an unbiased language guide. The guide says the evolution of wording is an important part of our culture and that as long as writers try to be sensitive to the feelings of minorities and special interest groups, as long as the writers consciously attempt to avoid divisive language that uh, offends, stereotypes, belittles, or hurtfully excludes people. 
So you can't write a student that's planning to graduate this spring. His, his, he should see his advisor at once. It should, he should see his or her advisor at once. In other words, assuming that it is his can be hurtful. Um, one of the ones, uh, acknowledging that some will find it unnecessary and cumbersome to use formulations like chairperson and members of Congress as, to pour, as opposed to chairman and congressman, the guide contends that if we can avoid the argument and the possibility of hurt with our use of reasonable substitutes, it's well worth it. Why don't you go to hell? How's that for worth it? You stupid bastard. You shouldn't be allowed to fucking teach a dog a trick in a dog obedience school. Um, louder with Crowder, students shamed by school chancellor as racist. But there's a problem. Stephen Crowder's got to be the best journalist writing today, by far. Listen to this. Uh, two college girls posted a photo of themselves using an exfoliating skin product. You know, like college girls do. Both things, the selfies and the skin products. The world waits with bated breath for girls to post the name selfies. Here's the sugar rub scrub through. The exfoliating skin product. It was a blackish brown color, so of course... They were racist. Last night, a disturbing racist post was made by two social media. It was brought to my attention. University of Wisconsin Whitewater Chancellor Beverly Coffer, who is an idiot, wrote in a post on the school's website. This post was hurtful and destructive to our campus community. While social media can certainly bring about positive change, it can also be a place deeply hurts and harms others. Oh, Like using skin cream. Copper had apparently interrupted the post as students putting on blackface before confirming what really happened. The students were taking pictures of themselves cleansing their skin with exfoliating facial masks. Now, the average millennial, or for that matter, Gen Xer, doesn't even know what blackface is, for one thing. Also, they wouldn't realize that blackface was not historically racist. It was done many times to portray African Americans in plays that were not comedies, because at the time it was illegal to hire black people and you would get your show shut down if you did. I'm not in favor of that, but I'm explaining a bit of history there since that doesn't ever seem to happen. He goes on, yes, taking pictures of yourself, exfoliating your face is stupid, but hey, it's a free country, or at least it was. If you want to broadcast to the world that you exfoliate in an effort to inspire others to exfoliate, exfoliate then more power to you. I think it's stupid, though. But that doesn't excuse the chancellor jumping the gun and assuming racism first. It does prove how far off the cliff we've jumped Sam's parachute. That means no parachute for you Russia fans. Who needs to think about things when you can just tap the all caps key, both figuratively and metaphorically, to show the world just how you care about feelings of people who aren't even offended? So, I mean, there's another epic fail down the PC social justice rabbit hole. That brings us to the runner up for the dunce cap of the month. That means the very next report is going to be the dunce cap of the month. So get ready. Joshua Cruz, the Daily Sheeple school districts are spending millions on Marxist white privilege training for staff. Now, we have completely and utterly dispelled the lie of global warming on here before. You know, look up correct views, white privilege, uh, global warming. That too, white privilege. Look up correct views, white privilege. And uh, it's a very long piece that we did. And we completely dispel it in every possible way. Uh, blow it out of the water. Prove it to be exactly what it is. Who still believes in it after watching that? Nobody. Uh, well, listen to this. Oh, your tax dollars hard at waste. If you've ever wondered what your tax dollars really go towards when your state funds public education, then look no further. There's a good chance that the schools in your community are spending big bucks on the Pacific Educational Group. This little-known San Francisco-based consulting firm specializes in improving education opportunities for minority students and is committed to achieving racial equality in education, according to the mission statement. In reality, the organization peddles white privilege-based ideologies to public school districts across America as they starve for public funds. 
They believe that our schools unfairly favor white students by promoting a white culture, and their business model involves training teachers to cater to minorities. In other words, they should say it's okay to uh, lie about history, I guess. They believe that the white curriculum promotes individualism and hard work at the expense of minority students who supposedly have a culture of collectivism. In other words, we should be teaching them it's okay to be communists, even though communism and socialism has destroyed every country that it's ever not due. Told you it was the runner up. I told you it was stupid. Socialism has destroyed every nation that's ever gone to. If you don't believe me, look up Venezuela if they still have a working website. More importantly, the Pacific Educational Group appears to be an ulterior anti capitalist agenda, and they frequently hire speakers with leftist and Marxist credentials, that is, people who want to destroy the Republic, which is exactly what Franklin warned about. He told everybody, You have a, uh, a democratic right. Uh, a constitutional republic, if you can keep it. He meant by keeping people like these away from our children, for one. At least four of the speakers they've hired in the past seven years have been admitted supporters of Bill Ayers, of course, who is completely wrong on global warming. So these people are as dangerous to our children as uh, the potential rapists are to the children in the, the Danish crime. I'm positive on it. How much money does a peg make every year? EAGnews.org recently polled 18 school districts that had hired PEG from 14 to 15 school year and found that altogether they paid $1.56 million for their services. In other words, a company that preaches white privilege and Marxism to our teachers and students is probably earning tens of millions of dollars every year, a multi-million dollar communist company. Say it isn't so. Yeah, they're getting rich complaining about capitalism making people rich. And that, friends, brings us to the Dundee, the Dunce Camp of the Month Award. Winner is here. That's right. The Dunce Camp of the Month Award winner. This is... Uh, this is the second time John Kerry has won one. Listen to this. Way to go, John Kerry. You managed to win two Dunce Caps of the Month. Um, as has Obama, who's getting it with this. Um, I say that because I should call the other story up, too. These two stories actually go together. Now, whenever a great number of people get their heads chopped off, many people have rightly considered that to be, say it with me, genocide, right? Listen to this. Now, the second story I'm going to get to is dated March, but it's fine. They go together, and the story originally broke in February 24th. Kerry having additional evaluation to decide if the slaughter of many Christians is genocide. People that have historically been Christians in that region for since the birth of Christianity are being slaughtered to the point where there's none left. Their churches are being leveled. They're being raped. They're being charged taxes for not being Islamic. They're being beheaded. They're being destroyed. But, you know, it might not be genocide. And yet this is the administration that wants to hint that the Trump could be like Hitler. No, you want to see Hitler, you look at John Kerry. Look at Obama. Secretary of State John Kerry told the House Appropriations Subcommittee on the Department of State and Foreign Assistance today that he is having an additional evaluation done to help him determine whether the systematic murder of Christians and other religious minorities in the Middle East at the hands of ISIS state and others should be declared as genocide. I will make a decision as soon as I have that additional evaluation and we'll proceed forward from there. So he doesn't know if slaughtering hundreds of thousands of Christians would classify as genocide. I said Hitler. He's actually more like Stalin. Most people don't realize that Stalin killed more Christians than Hitler did Jews, but it's true. Um, Kerry was responding to a question put to him by Representative Jeff Fortenberry, who is a sponsor of the resolution that would declare on behalf of Congress that it is, in fact, genocide. There's a link to it. Um, the resolution expresses the sense of Congress that those who commit or support atrocities against Christians and other ethnic religious minorities, including Yazidis, Turkmen, Sabia, Mandians, Kiaki, and Kurds, and who target them specifically for ethnic or religious reasons, 
are committing and are hereby declared to be committing war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. As a preface to the question, Fortenberry told Carrie about a young Syrian man who had been murdered by jihadists for refusing to renounce his Christian faith and buy into the, Allah, the lie of Islam. I had the extraordinary privilege of being in the room with Pope Francis when he, in the very powerful moment, was given a small cross, a cross of a Christian crucifix, said Fortenberry. The crucifix had belonged to a young Syrian man who had been captured by the jihadists and was told to choose, convert or die. And he chose, in his ancient faith tradition, Christ, and he was beheaded. His mother was able to recover the body and now bury him at the cross. And uh, he said, Mr. Secretary, this is repeating itself over and over and over again against Christians, Yazidis, and other religious minorities in the region. So he urges, uh, he says, for uh, use the authority and the power of the office to call this genocide and to help restore the rich tapestry of the ancient faith in the Middle East. Carey said he would need further evaluation done, and I share just a huge sense of revulsion over these acts, obviously, said, you know, the great Christian Carey. None of us have ever seen anything like it in our lifetimes. Of course, you know, it's not genocide or anything. Although, obviously, if you go back to the Holocaust, the world has seen it. Uh, that was genocide, Mr. Carey. That's why you're getting the Dove Cap of the Month. You just define genocide and then define the people that did it. But yet, this is a genocide. We are currently doing uh, what I have to do, which is review very carefully the legal standards and precedents for whatever the judgment is to be made. I can tell you that we are doing. He said, I have the initial recommendations made to me. I have asked for some further evaluation and will make my decision on this. And I will make the decision as soon as I have this additional evaluation. So what was the final outcome dated March 2nd? As I said, um, the, 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 the additional information, White House, RT, ISIS extermination of Christians can't be called genocide yet. You absolute idiot. Epic, epic fail. Worst leadership, worst president of, of my lifetime, maybe ever, would be Obama. The Obama administration says Islamic State's persecution of Christian minorities in Iraq and Syria is not genocide. The point where is to act is to accutate the term. It is such and that has not been reached. The White House spokesman Josh Ernst said at a press briefing, "How does this man even say these things with a straight face? He should be egged." As to whether Islamic State uh, is practicing genocide in its extermination of Christians in Syria and Iraq, Ernst said, my understanding is that the use of that word involves a very specific legal determination that has at this point not yet been reached. We have long expressed our concerns with the tendency of, well, not a tendency, a tactic employed by ISIS to slaughter religious minorities in Iraq and Syria, he added, but we have been quite candid and direct exactly about how ISIL's tactics are worthy of the kind of international robust response that the international community is leading, yeah, you know, like Russia. And those tactics include a willingness to target religious minorities, including Christians. However, this is another reason they're getting the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. The 1948 UN Convention at the Prevention of Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, this is uh, in large response to what Hitler did, says genocide is acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or part, the national, ethnic, racial, or religious group, including by means of killing members of the group. That is an exact definition of what ISIS is doing to Christians. In March 2015, a report from the United Nations Committee on Human Rights stated that the acts of violence by ISIS in Syria perpetuated against civilians because of their affirmation or perceived affiliation to an ethnic or religious group may constitute genocide. It says, um, the ongoing persecution of Christian minorities in Syria and Iraq has seen their numbers drop dramatically. In Iraq, Christians are down to around 300,000, from about 1.4 million in just two, 2003. According to 2015 estimates, that's from last year, it's gotten worse. 
from the UK-based Catholic NGO. In Syria, there are now just 500,000 Christians compared to 1.25 million in 2011. Okay, but no, 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 no. That's not genocide, right? No, not a chance. And that is why you win, and you may win the Dutch Cap of the Year. It's why you win the Dutch Cap of the Month Award. Listen to this absolute epic fail. Now, this is a very powerful, uh, powerful. I need you to pay close attention to the color of this font type because it'll be very important in a moment. The Dutch Cap of the Month. And there's a picture, I don't know if you can see it because I don't have a good camera. It's a, a decapitated child, unfortunately. It is a Christian child that was killed. The Dunn's Cap of the Month Award goes to the moronic Mr. Carey and the equally idiotic Mr. Obama. Only you two puppets of our time I wrote could somehow miss that what ISIS is doing to Christians is genocide. Somehow, ISIS has managed to kill somewhere around 150,000 followers of Christ. And yet you two idiots cannot seem to call it genocide. It is people like you that allowed Hitler to occur. I should have put Stalin. That allowed Hitler to occur. And when it is happening again, you instead invite those doing the killing to enter America from the very region while letting only 0.02%, and we've covered that, of Christians into the nation. May God have mercy on your soul someday, and may you never be able to look into the mirror again without seeing the blood of those that you allowed to die deep in your eyes. Now, here's why I said look at the font color. Look how I ended this, and I think it was worthy. Leave me your comment. Let me know if you agree. The font color of this award is the color of the Christian child's blood. I used Photoshop to do it. So that you can at least see it, since you somehow have not thus far idiots there it is and here we go I, i'll let you see the hat i did i think i did a good job on this is the hat dunce and then look oh yeah see that the uh the jihadist is saying what genocide and the decap at date and head says nope no genocide here and then of course uh there's an inverted cross and it says Seems okay to carry. So there you go, friends. That is your Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Please donate to my show if you can. You can do so at the correct views of Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. I will give you an address to send it to when you get a hold of me. And leave comments, hit subscribe, and hit share. It helps me greatly when you do. And I want to add Ben Carson, as of yesterday, has left the presidential race. Good night, friends. God bless.